Okay, welcome to today's class again. Um, in this class, we are going to look at some useful string methods. Okay, so um, there are a whole lot of string methods starting from index, length to uppercase to lowercase, plus index of um, replace. Place of slice, character at, end suite, includes. We'll be looking at this. Some of these methods give out a number type, some of them give out a Boolean type. It's very necessary that you understand the type of output that a particular method gives you. Also, know that most of these methods are functions, like they are functions, okay? The functions that are being created to do all these things. So we'll be seeing them, and later when we learn about objects, we can also learn how to create our own functions. So what I'll be doing here is um, I have this text here called University Front End Class on JavaScript, and then I have answer. So each of these things here. I'm going to evaluate them based on the answer is going to give me. So to do that, our HTML page is like this. I have this H1 and I have this um, H2 here where my answer is going to be. So I'm going to target this H1 and this H2. So to do that, I will say const, I will call it question um, Q cause Q to be equal to document dot query selector. I use query selector to select them. So I will select the H1 and I will output it inside H2. So H2 will be answer. So I will say const ans to be equal to um, Documents dot query selector H2. So I've already done that. Okay. So whatever that is on H2, I already have, I've selected that to be this, I've selected this to be that. Okay. So let's start with index of. So whenever you are saying index of, you are looking at what value will something give you? Okay. What value am I going to have at the end of everything? So if I want to check the index of you, um, it's going to give me a number, right? So index of you, index of n. So index of u is zero, n is one, i is two, and so on and so forth. Also know that these things are case sensitive. Okay. So These things are very much case sensitive. So I will actually say answer. If I say answer dot test content to be equal to hello everyone. Okay, that is going to change my answer to hello everyone. But if I say plus equals hello everyone, that means I will still have that answer, which is a text here plus that. So that is what I'll be doing. I'll be adding the answer to it to each text, okay? So that's it, right? Okay, so if I say that is what I'm going to have as my text and also, so let me put this text to make it easy for me. I want to put this text inside. Um, okay, let me target it like this. Uh, equal to q dot value. If I say q dot value, okay. Q dot value is not actually going to give me the value of that Q. All right. So the best thing I can do here is to 
actually bring this text and try to concatenate it to another text. Okay, so I can actually say Q dot key dot value will not work because this, this is not um an input element. If it's an input element, I'll use dot value to target it. But since it's not an input element, I can look at the inner text of that Q. Okay, and I will get the inner text of Q to be university front end class. So this is actually the same thing as what I have here. So it's called the inner text. So I want to grab that so I will not be writing much. Okay. I will call it var. I will call it const var to be equal to u dot inner text. So I'm going to copy this, cut it out and put it there as my value q dot inner text. So if I say here equal to var I will actually still get that to that hand just to verify. And if I say zero, I'm going to have that to be you. So that is where we are going to start our work today. So if I do, this is just what index means. Index is taking the, um, you just giving a square bracket. When I put in a square bracket, I think I can zoom this thing, control shift plus, plus. <clears throat> so whenever I put square bracket and I give it a value, a number like zero is going to return the index of the value that is at index zero at var. So if I give it one, it's going to tell me n and if it is two it's going to be i and so on and so forth so also know that these things are case sensitive if it is three it's going to return the value at index three okay so anything that can actually give me a number at the end of the day is what this thing is going to index is going to accept for me here so this is not more or less like a method but yes um Whenever you are putting in a square bracket here, you will always see how um, it means you are calling in a number and you are querying the data that you have somewhere to that. Okay, let's look at length. Um, we use length to verify the length of a text. So if I want to know how many characters are inside this text, okay, I can actually, um, I can say ans, the test content can still be given a test content is equal to var dot length. So that will actually give me the length of the variable there. So this has actually, I need to say plus equals here so that it will actually concatenate it for me, var dot length. So it's still logging out the formal value that I have here. Okay, so whatever I put here is still giving me the V here because this V here, it just coming from there, okay? So let me just comment it out so it doesn't disrupt my test. So this is bar dot length, and it's going to give me 39. Also know that this 39 is actually including all, even the spaces involved, not just the text, but also the spaces. For us to see very well what's actually transpired here, if I look at ans, um, to be equal to, um, let me say var dot split. So this will actually be viewed properly if I'm using the console to view it. Otherwise, this is going to, I'm coming to split anyway. Okay, so uh, ans is equal to var dot split. And I should be able to have um, this thing splitting this text for me and telling me, oh, that's so so thing, ans dot text content. So I omitted that text content to be equal to that. You can see the space is being included at this text. The space is being included. Okay. So it also counts space. So well, let us know how we can eliminate that if we don't want to count space. But I'm still coming to that. So the length of a text is very, very important. Imagine when you are trying to do something and then you 
probably you created an input and then um or maybe you created a box that is going to accept minimum of 50 characters and you need something that will count the characters for you so that when someone has given it more than not more than 50 characters um it will accept it but if what you give it is more than 50 characters it's not going to accept it okay so bar.length will help you to count the value of your text. So I'm going to also comment that out and leave it there. And I go to uppercase. So as the name implies to uppercase, this will help you to actually um, calculate or to turn a particular string to capital letter. Now I will tell something here. This var.length, if you look at it, this um, thing, it doesn't have parenthesis like i cannot see var dot length and i open and close parenthesis like i'm going to actually if i try that that is an error but i'm not seeing that error here if i open this work inside my council i will actually see an error let's just try that out so if i just open even the council on my visual studio code and i try to run this app and say node dot slash b the slash b dot js and i run it okay so that is the name of my file i will actually see that there is an error somewhere so i'm actually doing something that is going to tell me hey there's an error document is okay telling me document is not defined i'm just running something on a document and it's telling me document is not defined so but i'm not actually seeing this error properly because this is not is um, a council. If I open this very well inside um, rather a Visual Studio code, I'll be able to see why this thing is an error. Okay, so if I go to Visual Studio code and um, open my index.html and try to view this in a browser i'll be able to see it very well so but let me remove that by now all that okay so that is fine and uh, the length of our text is that so um so i'm going to put that out comma and if i say um ans dot text content to be equal to var dot to uppercase so now if i try this this is not going to do and you see what is true here function this thing this thing native that is because i did not put the parenthesis so but if i add the parenthesis you can see it has changed that text to what capital letter it has changed it to capital letter okay so um to verify the error on this are normal browser like google um this one is edge and if I go to cancel and let me try to comment this one out and bring out this and I try to open parentheses, I will actually see an error there telling me var dot length is not a function. That is to show you that methods are functions. So most of the methods we are seeing are functions. So if I go and include parentheses here, it means that this is a function. But this is not a function, okay? So this is a method, but this very method is not a function. You just calculate the rent. So that will actually clear the error that I'm having there. You see, there's no more error here. So to so uppercase, we change it to capital letter. It doesn't take any parentheses, any parameter, sorry. So we will see methods that take parameter, but this one does not take any parameter at all. Okay, so yeah, so that's it for this one. I'm going to comment it out, comment this one out too, and we go to index of. So index of will actually tell us what text is at a particular index or what is the index that a particular text occupy okay so as the test content plus equals var dot index of i can say index of u 
Now, if I just type you, this is an error. Okay, even though my um, I'm not going to see an error here, but if I go to the council, I will actually see that you is not defined because it's actually seeing this you that I put in here as if it were a variable. So for me to do that, it means I have to define a variable you, but I do not define a variable you. So I need to actually just put it in quotation mark. That is what it's expecting me to do. And when I do that, it will not tell me zero because there's no more error here. And I can see that it is zero. Index of you is zero. Remember, when we say var zero, it will also give us you. Remember here, when we do var zero, it will give us you. Okay, if I do var zero, you can actually see that it is you. So that is the thing that is occupying index of zero. Okay, so if I go and put this U in capital letter, mind you, these things are case sensitive and it will give me minus one, meaning this thing does not exist. That is one beauty thing about JavaScript. It's going to give you minus one whenever you are going to look for index or something that does not exist, okay? So that is awesome, meaning that I can actually use it to know when something exists or something does not exist. So if I'm looking for something, I can use it as a condition I like, if this thing exists, okay? That means if the index of this is not equal to minus one, that means it exists, do this. We actually see all these things when we start learning how to build functions, okay? So index of minus is zero, but index of C is six, index of C. Now, notice something about in. So index of C is going to give me six because that is where C exists. So I was talking about index of taking an optional parameter, okay? When we look at this, just pay attention to what is happening. You can see this thing coming out here. It's giving me two things, that there is a search string, that is the text I want to search where the index is, and then the position number. So looking at this, my test, I can see I have two C's here, okay? And the first C is at index of C. If I want to check where the other C exists, I can actually say, find the index of C from position seven. And now it can tell me that it's at 20 because I have a C at position seven. But if I say, find the index of C, probably at position if I still say 17, I'm going to still have 20. Maybe I say 120. This is crazy, but I don't have up to text of 120. It's going to give me minus one because it does not exist. So I can use this index of, to look for where a particular text exists in an index. So, and it's not only text that I can search for. Maybe I want to search for class. So if I say class now, where do I have class here? Yeah. It's going to tell me at position 20, even though I'm starting at one. It's not only going to look at C, it's going to look at hey, where does this entire class exist? Mind you, these things are also case sensitive. If I go and put capital C to be minus one, because I don't have capital C there. Okay, we look at how to handle all these case sensitive matter later. Okay, so um that is that is it on this, okay? I can use it to look for multiple words, but if I go and say look for classes, classes doesn't exist, it will be minus one. But when you're looking for class, class exists here, it will be 20. That is the position at which it exists. Mind you, this counting starts counting from what? Zero. So if I say zero, 
1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 for the space, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19 for the space. And then I can see that this C is at 20. So definitely is right. Okay. So we we'll look at last index of. We we'll look at last index of. So last index of works like index of, but we are now saying the last, which way is the last place that this thing exists? Okay. Let me say I'm looking for ans dot text content. I want to look at um plus equals var dot last index of last index of C. I can also include position. Let me use I anyway. I think I have multiple I's here. Okay. It's going to tell me, hey, the last I is at position what? 36. So, but if I had looked for index of I, it would have been two, definitely zero, one, two. But the last index of it is at 36. That is the last I is at 36, okay? So there is nothing, we don't have anything like middle index of down. Always know how these methods are written. They will be case casing rule. Okay. If I go and write last index of and I use capital lowercase i, okay, it doesn't know what I'm saying. And if I look at my cancel, it will tell me that var dot last index of is not a function. And whenever you see this kind of error, type error pop up, look at the, the error and ask yourself, did I really spell it very well? Okay, so if I do not spell it well, that is when I'll be getting this kind of errors. Okay, so it's very, very important that we are very mindful of cases. Methods in JavaScript are case sensitive. If you don't write them well, they're definitely not going to display. So to lower case. So to lower case is a very, very important uh, method, okay? Sometimes we just be like, hey, why do I need to lowercase if I'm actually typing something in lowercase? So do I need it? Yes, you need it because sometimes you don't control what people are writing, okay? So somebody might decide, I know people that if they're filling a form, they can decide to type their surname or maybe all their names in capital letter or maybe they're on the caps lock. They don't even know that they're on the caps law. So we need to actually find the way. How do I change these things back to lowercase? So I can say to lowercase. So to lowercase, we actually change all my text to lowercase. Answer the text content. I'm always omitting it. And if I go to my browser, it's always telling me there's an error. Assignment to a constant variable. Okay, I'm not allowed to assign anything to a constant variable because the answer declared is a constant. So, and I don't need to assign something to the assignment to it. So that's why I'm doing the test content to that. Okay, so you can see that my H1 everything now is written in lowercase. Is there anything written in capital letter? Yeah. Yes, the J and the S were originally written in capital letter, but I've converted everything back to lowercase. And it will help me to easily manipulate this string how I want, okay? Let's say that I wanted to change the first letter of each word to capital letter, okay? Now, when I see something like this, I have to convert everything to lowercase, and we can look at how, do I, how would I be able to do that? Okay, we'll get to the method that will help us to do it, and we'll be able to do that. And we are getting there. We're going to replace. So replace is used as the name implies replace. This is kind of one of the mnemonic methods in JavaScript to so replace replace something, okay? All right, so let me just uncheck this thing out. 